We're here today, Donald, to have a chat about the uh, the 30-year business plan. It's a piece of work that we concluded at, at the end of last year. A lot of time and effort went into it, both from officers, members, and uh, obviously the tenants and their representatives and all the stakeholders. Let's let's sort of try and understand about the, the 30-year business plan and, and why is it so important to us. So you you know as, as well as I do, you know the legal requirements for us to, to have a 30-year business plan. But what what are the other the other positives and, and reasons for it? Well, it sets out the way we're going to go forward over the next 30 years and how we're going to fund what, what we're going to spend. That's really important that we know how we're going to spend money and where we're going to get it from. And within this uh, document, there are four main objectives. Um, which is improving core services, which is the services we operate at the moment, council houses, reducing carbon uh, emissions, and regeneration of our estates, and all are equally important. Yeah, and, and that 30 years sees an incredible amount of investment in our housing stock. We know around 250 300 million pound will be spent on improving the stock and uh, in terms of maintenance and uh, day-to-day repairs we employ our own workforce and we have um, uh, 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 a, a lot of people that are associated with it with the housing revenue account that are local people and over the 30 years I think we're going to spend upwards of 1.5 billion pounds on our stock and in and a lot of that will will flow through into our local community because a lot of the people we employ are local, a lot of the businesses we work with, a lot of the contractors we work with are local people, and I think that's important as well. Yes, it has a huge effect on the local economy. There can't be many organisations or companies which are going to be spending £1.5 billion over the next 30 years, the majority of which will be invested in the local economy. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. And and so let's talk about those four four main objectives First of all, you mentioned those. Where one is our, our estate regeneration program. Two is to improve our our services. Uh, three is to Im- increase the number of, of council houses or affordable homes we have. And the fourth is to minimise our own imp- impact on the, on the environment and um, in terms of uh, the green agenda. So, should we talk a little bit about why we came up with those four objectives and how we got there? Because we didn't we didn't make them up. We didn't do it in a darkened room. We we took some time to understand people's views. Yeah, yes, I mean, there's a huge amount of consultation and every single tenant was given a, the opportunity to have their say as well as the our Lincoln Tenants Panel, which is made up of representatives who are tenants across the city. Um, the councillors themselves of all parties had a good, good say in it. They had five or six sessions looking at it and obviously the staff as well that haven't been put into it. So there's been a huge amount of consultation on it and this is how w- what the outcome is and I think... It's what people want, and it's not just what councillors want, it's what everybody wants. And I think, just just remind me, but I think we started off originally with three of those main priorities, and we added a fourth because of that consultation, didn't we? Yes, and the, the, the um, added um, objective was uh, improving core services, which um, was a key thing for tenants, uh, and from their experiences, that's what they wanted to see, and so we've added it in. Yeah, and so I think that shows that that, that it was a, a genuine consultative exercise. So talk, talking about the, those four main areas, I suppose the uh, additional uh, housing into our stock is pretty self-explanatory. We we want to increase uh, our stock because we have such demand for good quality affordable housing in the city. And we know how important good quality housing is, good affordable housing uh, for, the, for the residents, uh, the people of Lincoln and... Good quality homes leads to many benefits in our community, doesn't it? Yes, and if people live in good quality homes, their health improves. The chances are that their children's education will improve. Their whole life could be transformed by moving into a good quality council house at a uh, affordable rent. That's really important for people going forward. Um, we, we are a big player in the city in the sense that we own... 7,800 homes, and that's roughly one in five of the properties across the city. So we're extremely important in providing homes for people. And those standards, keeping the standards high uh, in terms of, you know, even down to room sizes and uh, um, uh, the size of plots and garden space and things like that, that's important also because it drives up standards because if we as a big housing provider in the city have got high standards, then 
you'd like to think that those standards in the private sector would start to edge up to to match what we've got it, uh, in our own stock. Yes, that will be the aim. I have to say that um, it's really important that we provide good quality homes for people and that people aspire to live in council housing. And I think the number of people on our housing register shows that how council housing is seen by a lot of people as the type of housing they'd like to be in. Uh, we should perhaps have changed from maybe 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I, I think so. So an ambition, pl- ambitious plans in relation to increasing our stock numbers over the next 30 years, um, 1,700 I think is is the target and we've got some sites identified across the city um, that will help us to do that. Um, yes, and also we need to make sure that we build different sorts of houses. So um, partly due to the right to buy, our housing stock has become quite skewed so that um, something like 80% of our properties are either one or two bedroom. We really need to have some larger properties and we need some bungalows uh, so that there's different sorts of properties. And recently we, we opened a, a new extra care unit at DeWink Court, which is a fantastic facility, but again is, is a new venture for us. And that, that may be the way forward for providing accommodation for some of our older people. Yeah, I think some of the areas we've got in the city as well, um, perhaps um, the housing there is... is uh, Long in the tooth, should I say, in terms of it was it was built post the war for a short period of time. With they're still in our stock, and perhaps now are starting to show the signs of um, aging, should we say? And we we need to take some action in relation to to looking at the future of those, and perhaps replacing them with high quality homes again. Yes, and the fact is that until the nineteen seventies, council housing house building was something we did a lot of, and but since then. It's tailed off, and there was a period when councils couldn't build ha- council houses. Um, now we've started back again building, and we've done very well since we started that. Not only by building, but also buying um, off plan from other you know, like housing associations who built properties and they've sold them to us. Yeah. So that's really important, and we've bought new developments in some cases where the, the uh, developer has offered the, the entire site to us. So these, these are key things. So, so, I mean, what we need to do is make sure that we manage and maintain our existing stock as well in in the next thirty years. Because you've heard me say this before. In my view, we're just passing through, and we're just the custodians of our stock at this time of our our houses that are very precious to the city council. So we've got to make sure that we leave them in a better state than than we took them on. I, I guess a few years ago now. So. Um, not only maintaining the properties and um, to a high standard um, that is important to us, but also the estate areas and regeneration the estate areas, and again that's a, a priority. Lots to do there, um, a, a lot of money to be invested. What what what's your view on that? What what sort of work would would be ideal for us to be? Yeah. I mean, each estate is different, and there's some really significant differences between some areas. And so what works, for instance, for Ermine doesn't necessarily work for Birchwood. The houses are different sort of houses. The layout is different. We need to do our best to improve the just the general feel of the areas so that um, people who walk around or drive around think this is a really nice place to live. Mm. And we can do that. Sure. And that, that can, can link across to the carbon agenda, can't it? We can do more uh, in terms of retrofitting our properties, bringing them up to a at least a, a standard, a sea level standard, um, but also we can improve the green spaces in our estates and, uh, you know, add in um, wild, wildflower areas and things like that. I think not only are they going to help us with our carbon agenda, but also um, in the look and the feel of our estate areas. Yes, we already have one or two areas which are designated for wildflower planting, um, but it's, it's how people perceive it. So if people look out and there's a nice flower display, that improves their mood. Um, and it, it just improves the whole area. So I think uh, but the, the whole issue of the, how estates look, a lot of our estates were planned at a different era when people behaved in a different way. Um, some Quite a lot of our estates were built before everybody had a car. People don't just have one car. There's quite often two or even three cars in one household. Yeah, car parking is an issue. It's a huge issue in some areas, and, and in some cases at the moment it's not possible to solve it. Um, but that's because these houses were built 
for instance, in cul-de-sacs were built before anybody had a car. Mm. Like you're saying, some families are, have got multi, lots of cars now. Yes, and they, and they, but they need the car because they need to get to work, and quite often they might not be working in Lincoln, or they might be working really odd hours. So um, you're not going to get a, a public transport in the early hours of the morning if you happen to be needing to either come home or mm. go to work yeah. at that time. Local facilities are... are, are, are uh, would be ideal as well. So we need to look to see where in in our estate areas if we can't encourage local facilities into there, particularly around uh, NHS and yeah. yes, and we've got some estates like Irvine West where the facilities are very few. That they only have a a, a co op post office and I think there's one other or two other shops, and that's it. There's no other community facilities. So in these areas, we need to look at ways of improving that. Yeah, and of course we've got to have good quality services to to underpin that investment in our existing estates and um, the growth of our housing stock and to achieve our ambitions in relation to the carbon agenda so we you know investing in making sure that our services are as good as they possibly can be is equally important yeah in the, as regards to the carbon agenda actually we've got majority of our properties are band c already we need to do our best to improve those if we can to band b at least but also we've got some which are d and one or two which are E, we need to make sure that they, if, if at all possible, can be brought up to a better standard. Because it, not only is it improving the carbon emissions, but also it, it actually reduces the heating costs for the tenant. And that's really important that tenants don't end up spending all their money on heating their own homes. If we can do anything to reduce that, that's, that helps them. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, of course, when we talk about underpinning uh, those those uh, long list of, of ambitions we need good quality services obviously we are um, trying to improve um, those daily we have a new inspection regime now from the regulator of social housing so and, and part of that regime is the tenant satisfaction measures which we are undertaking now where we take the views of our, our tenants on a quarterly basis and get some really good feedback from them on how we're performing and what we're doing and, and we need to respond to, to, to that going forward. Yes, and the tenant satisfaction surveys are really important to us because the people who are chosen to take part in a particular survey in, in any particular quarter are chosen at random, so it's not the same people each time, it's different people, so over a period of time very large number of people will be asked their opinions and they can be quite critical but it's important that if people have a problem that they tell us then we can improve it and so it's not all bad that people say that that's not what I would like um, I would like this um, and you know I think compared to other councils our results are actually quite good um, so and they will improve as time goes on as well I suppose it's that feedback that we get is showing that we're learning from it and taking it on board and um, changing the way we deliver services to respond to to people's views and yes and and I think uh, it's a level of um, consultation which perhaps is not been happened in the past in any area of the council's work not just housing um, I, I think that um, as we move forward one of the big things will be improving the, uh, bringing a new IT system for housing which will create all sorts of opportunities for us, and not least of which is feeding back things to tenants and getting them to feed back things to us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that. I mean, bringing our IT up, um, into the twenty first century is uh, is uh, is dearly needed and and will make a massive difference. So, so I, I suppose overall, you know, having the thirty year business plan benefits us in a number of ways. In the sense that we have a plan and it's clear and transparent and it's been and shared with us and people have had an opportunity to shape that um so obviously the tenants will benefit so and and i guess our staff will benefit as well because they've got clear objective and plans and they'll see the benefit of the investment making their daily working lives easier so um so going forward how, how are we what's the best way to make sure that we're monitoring um the plan and making sure that the outcomes and objectives we we've, we've set are are going to be achieved. Well, one of the things we'll do is we'll re review it on a regular basis, so that obviously over thirty years, over that period of time, it's a long period of time, and actually 
people's um, breaking idea, it down into chunks yeah, will be ideas ideal. Of what they want mm. can change over that period of time. Um, but also, we, we will check annually that the finances are in place to do what we want to do. Because obviously, there's been huge changes in uh, due to inflation uh, and all sorts of things. That, that, um, for instance, the Ukraine wars cut supplies of some materials and made it harder to, to get hold of. So things change, which are completely unexpected. And by reviewing it on an annual basis for finances, it means that we, we will be on top of what what's going forward. Yeah. There's also some um, kind of individual elements within the work we did in bringing the plan together. One was uh, to have a look at our high-rises. So we've done a full review of our high-rise buildings um, and um, we know there's got we've got some challenges there. Uh, we've also reviewed our um, uh, uh, older people's accommodation uh, and again, we know that needs are changing with older people they want a different outcome now uh, and we need to understand that going forward and what what uh, impact that uh, will have on us so um what's our ambitions in those areas well, well over the next 30 years there'll be some very big changes for instance in what you can offer people older people in their homes and um that the in terms of digital changes there's all sorts of monitoring that can be done and improvements to their life and improvements to the equipment they have um, that can make their lives a lot easier. Which and these things weren't available ten, fifteen years ago. It, it's a and the type of accommodation we we want to offer as well because we have got um, some facilities that have got shared accommodation that perhaps nowadays is not not, not yes. necessarily the right thing. Yes, we've got um, a couple of sheltered housing schemes where the in effect bed sits, and that's. At the time they were built, people thought it was wonderful because it was a big improvement in what they'd been in before, but they were built many years ago and uh, people's views of things changed. And yeah. And, and in terms of our high-rises, we know that they're, they're uh, you know, uh, in good condition and, 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 and safe, um, but they were built in the 60s and um, we need to think about the long-term future of those. Yes, and we're, we've only got three tower blocks which compared to summit councils um, is a very modest number we need to make sure that we follow all the regulations and we, we there's a new regime coming come in for testing for inspections of high rise um, and we're well on top of that um, i'm sure that at various times the fire safety regulations will change as they have done since Grimfell, and that's understandable and we we need to make sure we know where we're going with that and, and maintain our high rise obviously the high rise each of them houses a large number of people and it's not as simple as saying oh we'll knock it down because actually where do you put the 80 yeah, or 90 people lot, who live in those tenants in there isn't and we've got to you know think about where they're going to go in the in between yeah but it's important that they're safe and they are safe places and none of our blocks have any cladding and that's a huge difference compared to some councils so a lot to do uh, and 30 years seems like a long time but I guess um, we'll soon be crunching through those years um, um, because uh, time passes quickly when you're dealing with a big a lot of stock and a lot of tenants yes so, yes and in 30 years time several of our tenants won't be in our stock they'll have moved on um, and particularly some of our younger ones for instance they may, may move out of Lincoln um, so people move around and there's, there's quite a high turnover in terms of if you went back 30 or 40 years as to who was in our council homes, they're different people to, to the um, people who are there now. Yeah. So uh, it's been a, a, a terrific journey creating the 30-year business plan and uh, a lot of people are going to benefit from, from this. You know, our tenants, the city as a whole, its economy, our staff. Uh, our future tenants, of course, will benefit from it. Uh, our members as well, because they're very proud of the of the housing stock we have. It's effectively the, the jewel in the crown, we could call it. Um, so we have many people to, to thank to, for, for their uh, input into it, the staff, the tenants, elected members, yourself. Um, and, in, and in particular the tenants, because actually the most important people in this are the tenants, because they live in the houses and they experience day-to-day -day any of the issues that they have and what their neighbours have. 
So it's important from their point of view that they've had their say and that in the future they continue to have their say about what they want, what they like, what they don't like and how we can improve things. So so that's uh, uh, a good review of our 30-year business plan and what it means for the city, our tenants and our staff going forward. Uh, this is the first of a, a few podcasts we're going to do over the coming weeks discussing uh, our housing, the housing revenue account and what our plans are. Um, I hope that's a, a good run through for everybody and um, we look forward to having further discussions in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, yeah. In future, we've got other topics we can talk to about and uh, explain exactly why we're doing things and uh, what we'd like to see improved. And also, if, if anybody thinks of anything that they'd like to understand more and uh, get get some more information on, we'll be happy to, to, to discuss that and yeah. uh, bring others into the conversation should that be appropriate.